Philippians chapter number three. Uh, we we'll continue our study in the book of Philippians, and uh, once again, and uh, talking about our theme, rejoice. I mean, we should always remember to rejoice, and and I, I we've talked about before uh, how joy is a fruit of the spirit, and rejoicing, rejoice is a verb. I mean, it, it's something that we do. Uh, rejoice in what God has done, who He is, what He will do. And joy is a choice, and we've been talking about that. And last time we were together, last week we still had uh, Brother LeClaire with us. Uh, but last time we were together, I tried to preach this message, but uh, I felt the Lord leading me a different direction, so we got a different message. Uh, but it was a blessing, because I was ready for this week extra early, all right? Um, and so Philippians uh, chapter number 3, let's just begin reading uh, in verse number 1. The Bible says, finally, my brethren, he says, rejoice in the Lord. To write these same things to you, to me, is indeed not grievous, but for you, it is safe. He's saying, he's saying, he's saying, the, the, to write these same things to me, to me is not grievous. He's saying, hey, it's not, it's not bothering me to repeat these things, all right? Uh, Paul repeats himself quite a lot here. I mean, the Bible repeats itself quite a lot in some, in a lot of different ways. Uh, but it's not bothersome to him to have to repeat these things. Why? Because what he says next. But for you, it is safe. And that word safe, is, it, it, this is a good thing. I want you to be established in this. I want you to know who this, be grounded in this. Hey, I, I thought about making our theme for 2025 to rejoice. That's not what it is, all right, but I thought about it. All right, just so don't, you know, don't, <laughs> don't get that in your head. But it's such an important thing. It's, it's made such an impact that, hey, we have to make a decision to not gripe about the things that we don't have or things that, we are going, that are going wrong, but look at all the positive things that God is doing. We rejoice and also rejoice in the Lord. Why? God, God is working. He is good. He's, he's doing all things uh, uh, for, uh, for his honor and glory. And so he says, hey, I, I want you to be established to live by this, to rejoice every single day. And we need to do that. We need to rejoice every single day. Rejoice in the Lord. And so he says, uh, then he begins to write about some of the things in life that can take away our joy. And we're talking about this. He says in verse 2, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Now, that word concision, that means beware of the mutilation. You might say, preacher, what does that mean? And at first I read this and I'm like, what does this mean? I, I don't know what it means. So I looked it up, you know, and then he, we, we get some clarity in verse number three says, for we are the circumcision." Okay, so he's talking about circumcision, all right? Which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So he says, beware of, uh, beware of the concision. He's talking about mutilation, you know? And, he, and he's speaking specifically of the Jews who were holding people to the Old Testament law and specifically circumcision. I don't know if you remember, if you remember in Acts chapter number 15, that there were some men who, who came together and said, if, if, you, if you're not circumcised by the law of Moses, that you cannot be saved. And so Paul was uh, speaking about these legalistic uh, Judaizers, is, is the term for them, who were trying to constrict people's lives and get them to uh, abide by the Mosaic law and specifically circumcision here. And... Paul is very clear and under inspiration of God how God feels about this sort of legalistic attitude, especially when Christ has freed them from the law, okay? But before we get too much into it, uh, let me not forget to pray. Let's open up in prayer uh, and ask the Lord to be with us this evening. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. God, thank you for once again allowing us to come together and, 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 and Lord, the reminder to rejoice in you and and Father, Lord, I, I pray that let us not any let not anything lead us um, from rejoicing. Lord, help us to be grounded and firmly established in this and live it day by day. 
Lord, I pray that you give, uh, fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and give me the wisdom uh, to, just, to just preach your word. And Lord, help us to be uh, fed and edified and, and admonished, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you continue to give us all things that we need. And Lord, help us to ultimately worship you and glorify your name, Lord, for how great you are. Father, we love you. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, and I've titled the message is this, there's no joy in the flesh, or no joy in the flesh. And Paul, Paul in verse 1, he's saying, hey, I, I want you to be established in this. I want you to be established in the fact that, hey, we need to rejoice in Christ, and there's great freedom and great, and, and great uh, just joy in the Lord that we have. Why? Because of our salvation. Because of our salvation. And he's saying, hey, beware. Hey, there is something that we need to, uh, to pay attention to, to be aware of, and he wants us to be aware of those people not, that we not only not pay attention to, not listen to, not heed to these people, because there's a danger in this. There's a danger in subscribing to this doctrine. There's a danger in subscribing to these people. Why? Because uh, they're trying to st steal away the joy that we have, whether lo knowingly or unknowingly, we need to be rooted in the truth. And you know, the, the truth, the Word of God, it is so important that the Word of God continually renews and renews and renews our mind. Why? Because part of the reason why we struggle with so many things in life is because we are still looking at things from an unbiblical perspective. If we had the mind of Christ and we truly looked at things the way that God wants us to look at things, I guarantee you we would struggle with so many things, so many less things, okay? And so uh, Paul is talking about these uh, Judaizers, these ones who are trying to uh, hold people to the Old Testament law and, 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 and hold people to uh, circumcision. And, uh, and here it is, Acts 15.1, the Bible says, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, he cannot be saved. And Paul equates these people to dogs. In fact, he doesn't even call them them of the circumcision. He calls them mutilators. Uh, mutilation is not a great thing, all right? Unnecessary cutting of the flesh is, is not a great thing. He says, beware of these people. And he says, beware of dogs. Now, a dog, listen, I love dogs, all right? Dogs are furry, cute little animals, all right? I want a dog, all right? Back in the ancient world, Melinda's shaking her head. No, no, I want more than one dog, okay? Back in the ancient world, when we see people refer to dogs, this was not a term of endearment, okay? It was not talking about a few, cute little furry animal. No, it was speaking to, a lot of times, a, a wild, <laughs> uh, a wild uh, animal, and it was... Like I said, not a term of endearment. All right, you did not want to be called a dog, okay? And so, in fact, it's, it's, it, it's so bad. He says, beware of dogs, right? And think about dogs as uh, just people who just seek after their own flesh and just want what they want. And beware of dogs, and he equates that to beware of evil workers, right? And, and there's the evidence, and then he says, beware of the concision. Beware of these uh, people who uh, practice mutilation. And here's the thing. Salvation in Jesus Christ is by faith alone. It, it is only by faith. Anybody who preaches any other gospel is not of God. I, I want us to know that. I, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things... Uh, that um, there's a lot of things that, you know, we need to take serious, and there's a lot of things that um, are important issues, but the most important issue is that of salvation. Why? Because if anybody preaches any other gospel, they're leading people away from Jesus. They're leading people away from salvation. They're leading people away from heaven. That person is not preaching from God. That person is not preaching truth. And hey, I think all doctrine is important. But the one thing that I absolutely, I want to make sure that 
everybody knows is I'm not willing to compromise, first of all, on any of those. But I'm not willing to compromise on the gospel. Hey, we can disagree, I can disagree with somebody, still be friends, whatever. But we got to get the gospel straight. And, and in fact, the Lord feels so strongly about this. In Galatians 1.8, he says, But though we, or any angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be cursed. And so the Lord feels very strongly about this. No doubt Paul, writing under inspiration of God, is saying, hey, hey let, it's not about what we do. What we do matters, but it is about the finished work of Jesus Christ. Hey, let's worry about the doing after, but let's make sure people have a firm foundation of their salvation, have a firm foundation that, that, that they are saved, that, they're, that they will spend eternity in heaven if they, if they have trusted in Christ. And so when we talk about the law of Moses, uh, we understand that the law was never meant to save. The law was never meant to say whether we look at the Levitical law, the, the, the second law in Deuteronomy, and, and there's a lot to be learned from the law. Let me say that. I mean, I've, I've been wanting to do a study on the Old Testament law. Why? Because there's a lot to learn from it today. All Scripture is, is given by inspiration of God, and it's all profitable. And, and we, we're, we're under the, 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 the age of grace. But let me tell you, the law was never meant to save. The law was meant to be like a mirror to show us how wicked we are. It was meant to say, hey, this is the law, okay? And just taking the Ten Commandments, I mean, we've all broken it at some point. I mean, it's meant to show us how wicked we are and point us to the need for the Savior, the coming Messiah. Galatians 3.24 says, Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we may be justified by faith. And see, if you put faith and works together, that's a works-based salvation. I mean, you add anything to faith, it, it makes it a works-based salvation. And see, when it comes to this, people tend to put an emphasis on the self. Oh, I'm good enough to make it. <laughs> uh, if you do this, if you follow my teachings, if you do this, uh, hopefully you can get there. That's what, it, that's what pretty much every other religion teaches and listen, we will always, 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 always fall short. And so it de-emphasizes Jesus, and it overemphasizes the works of man. It, 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 we steal, it steals the glory of Christ because we're saying the sacrifice of Jesus Christ was not good enough to save me. I need to do X, Y, and Z. And so Paul feels very strongly about this, and, 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 and it's important for us to understand is that, hey, we need to stick to the words of Scripture. I mean, the, the minute we're moved away from a biblical mindset, biblical doctrine, biblical salvation, a biblical way of just looking at the world, I mean, we just get moved away from that, and what happens? We're not firmly rooted in the joy that we have in Christ. He, Paul tells us to beware of this and beware of it for a reason. But what, what, what does it take to be right with God? Verse number three. He says, for we are the circumcision. Now, he's not saying, you know, that they, every single person necessarily was physically <laughs> circumcised. But what he was saying is that, hey, you think you guys are the ones right with God? No, no, I call you mutilators. But we are the ones right with God. We are of the circumcision. For we are the circumcision. Look what it says. Here's a qualifying word for that. Which worship God in the Spirit. Which worship God in the Spirit. Hey, listen, it's less about the outward actions that we do. I mean, those things are important. I mean, but, but you can fool me or, 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 or everybody else around us, you can fool. And Jesus, throughout his earthly ministry, uh, uh, preach on the heart of man how, how they, they, they honor them with their lips, but their heart was far from them. Uh, I mean, we have to have a proper spirit when we worship God. In fact, God, the Bible says, John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so, but works, good deeds flow from the inside 
out. What is inside will come out. Good or bad? I, I mean, when I, when I hear somebody uh, complaining or when I hear somebody say something nasty, you know, that is just, I, I think about it, man, if that's what I hear, how much more is going on than the inside? Right? It, what we hear is just out of the abundance, abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If this is what I'm hearing with my ears, how much more negative and how much more uh, things do need to be worked out in that person's heart? I'm not talking about just everybody. This is a check for me also. I'm like, I'm thinking, if people are hearing this out loud, what, what am I not hearing that they're already thinking, right? And, and so it, it's a problem of, of the heart. And the point is, good works flow from a heart that just wants to worship God. From a heart that just loves God and wants to worship God. And of course, you cannot serve God unless you have the Holy Spirit of God. It's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. The Bible says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceits after the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And verse 11 says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism wherein also ye are risen with him to the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead now listen to the words in you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him hath forgiven you all trespasses blotting out the handwritten of ordinance that was against us which was contrary to us and took it away nailing it to his cross and having spoiled principalities and power he made a show of them openly triumphing over them and we talk about the circumcision putting away of your flesh dying to self because we are the circumcision. We are the ones that are right with God. We have died to self. We no longer have to obey the Old Testament. Uh, 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 this law of circumcision. But now we have to make sure that we are right with God in the Spirit. Uh, verse 3, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit. And what's that next, what's that next uh, word? And rejoiced in Christ Jesus. Hey, Christians should be rejoicing. In fact, uh, rejoice in the Lord. Christ didn't die for us to live a miserable life. Let me say that again. God did not die for us to give us life for us to live in misery. He died for us to, to have joy, right? He, he, said, he said, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Christ died for us, not so that we can live life glum. And I'm not saying you, you owe it to yourself. I'm saying, hey, Christ died for you so that you might live. So that you may live life and, and that enjoy it. And, and look at all the wonders that God has done and rejoice in them. Why? God wants you to see that he is good. and Rejoice in who he is and what he's done. And, and so he rejoiced in his finished work. I mean... I mean, I pray that, and I pray, and I should pray more often, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. I mean, the, the joy we have that when we trust in Christ, and sometimes I believe we just need to be reminded of who, we're, who we were before we got saved. I think it would do us a lot of good to remember that. I think it would do us a lot of good to just uh, recognize that, hey, I need to remember what my life was like before and take account and keep track of all that God has been doing. I, I, one thing that I've tried to be better and better and better at is look at everything that God has been working in my life every single day and find something to be thankful for in that day. And, and just, just thank God for how he, how he works and all the things that we get to enjoy. But again, Christ did not die for us to live a joyless life. He died for us to live a joyful. So we also we ought to always rejoice 
in the Lord, rejo rejoice in what he has done. Rejoice in who he is. Who is he to me? Who is he to you? Rejoice in our shepherd. He is our shepherd. In John 10, 11, he says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. John 10, 27, he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me. Christ knows you by name. Hey, we should be walking with him daily. Hey, he knows. Uh, we, we know them. And, and as a shepherd, we should recognize the voice of our Lord. Follow him every day. I, I mean, there's a great joy in walking with God daily. And doing everything that he asks us to. And just, and, and just walking with him and talking with him. And and rejoicing with him, and there's this great joy in walking with God. John 10, 20, he says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. We are known by Christ. We are loved by Christ. And we are led by Christ. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit. A hey, Christian life is not about checking off a to-do list. It's about saying, hey, seeking God first. You know, I, I uh, Brother Mark said in Sunday school that if we're not, you know, that even pastors, if we're not careful, we can idolize the ministry, the work of the ministry. It's a great work. And I will say, I love the ministry. I love the work. And I should have loved it. I mean, it's what I'm called to do. And I love working hard. <laughs> I love working hard. I love working and know that I'm working for the Lord. Pastor Jason Gaddis says, God first, then the work. I mean, God first always in our lives. God first always in our lives. But we, For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus. And it says, and have no confidence in flesh. No confidence in the flesh. Hey, we should all be doing great things for God. We should all be following the Lord every step of the way. But God help us if we start thinking about what we do as anything that should be applauded. In Romans chapter 12, Paul talks about giving our bodies a living sacrifice. He said it is our reasonable service. It's the least that we can do. Hey, we all ought to strive to do better and do great works for God, but have no confidence in yourself, in the flesh. Have no confidence uh, in the works of the flesh. Don't trust in them for salvation. And in fact, in verse number four, Paul writes, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that uh, that he hath aware of, he might trust in the flesh, I more. He said, hey, if anybody should have confidence in their works in the flesh, it's me. Why, he says, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew, uh, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning seal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. He's saying, hey, if there's anybody who should have confidence in this, it's Paul. <laughs> He's from the tribe of Israel. He's, uh, he was circumcised. He, he was a Pharisee. He had a zeal for God. But look what he says. He says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. See, here's the thing. In order for us or anybody to come to Jesus Christ by faith, we have to come to the conclusion we're not. When I talk to people and say, "What do you?" and they, and, and and I ask them, "Why should? Why do you, uh, do you think you're going to heaven?" and I ask them the reason. They say, "I'm a good person." Stop trusting in flesh. We have to come to to in order for humble ourselves and 
and come to the life-saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, we have to come to the realization that we're not good enough, and it is only through Christ that we can be saved. And so we have to rely on Him, not our flesh, not ourselves, not another person. We look only unto Jesus. And when we, we have to cling to biblical truth for our joy. The minute our mind gets both moved away by any false doctrine, any person preaching any other gospel and, or anything else, we can lose the biblical mindset that God wants us to have. I believe if we study this book, if we, if we are rooted in the Word of God, we can and we will have great joy as long as we apply it. As long as we apply it. I'm all done. We'll close in prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, thank you for uh, continuing to preach or, or to speak to us through your preaching of your word. And, and Father, Lord, I, I pray that you just help us to continue. Lord, help us to continue faithfully uh, in your word. Lord, help us to have confidence in the finished work of Christ. Lord, we need you every single day. Lord, we need you every hour. And Lord, I pray that you continue to bless us and bless our services. Lord, help us to bring glory to your name. Father, we love you. We pray these things in Jesus' precious name.